Greetings, Petroheads. Welcome back to Automation and Car Company Tycoon Games. So, um, I am working on the on, on the compilation of the cars that are going to be going up in the finals of the BJSCC Community Challenge. Um, but I'm not quite done yet. I'm hoping to finish it either tomorrow or early next week. And depending on, you know, how long it's actually going to take. So for today, uh, I have sort of a bonus car for the BJSCC, um, like one that applies to all the rules, but, um, and it's obviously outside of the competition, but let's just have some fun, right? Or I, I decided to take a, I decided to take a slightly different approach and do something that hasn't been done in this um, BJSCC because everything in this competition, like every single car has been rear drive, which I mean, of course, if you if you think of a um, um, if you think of a Japanese sports car from the '90s or early 2000s, that's pretty much what you think of, right? But um, this is also the sort of era that spawned cars like the, um, or at least made cars popular like the Mitsubishi Evo or the Subaru Impreza, right? So as a result, this thing is all-wheel drive. It's got a sport interior. It's got fiberglass panels, all-wheel drive, a 6-bit gearbox, double wishbones all around, and it's got a 1.6-liter turbocharged in 94 with 200 horsepower that drives up to 8,000 RPM. It doesn't have VVL because, well, rallying never allowed for VVL, and um, I wanted to keep it at least somewhat true to that spirit. Um, it's full aluminium. It's got pretty good internals, so you can work on the engine some more and it'll be fine. I mean, you shouldn't rev it too much higher though, because we do have very slight valve float occurring, but um, as, as, it, as it stands, it's, it's not bad at all, but if you rev it higher, then valve float might become a problem. So cam profile is obviously pretty aggressive already. Um, then again, what this, what, what this car is, what, like what's really gonna make this um, th this engine pop off is increasing the the turbo boost to like 1.2 bars or something, or 1.5, or fitting a much bigger turbine. We've got throttle per cylinder configuration, a standard intake, running on 91 octane fuel. Obviously, you could run it on 95. Fuel mixture is relatively rich, so we can make that good power and torque. The torque curve is actually pretty linear. And then, as I said, it rests to 8000 RPM. It's got uh, one straight through muffler, the other one got deleted. This is also going to show us from when we have valve load, from what RPM on. Actually, apparently not very much valve float at all, but slight problems with the pistons right at the red line. We've got a six-speed manual gearbox, a viscous limited slip diff. We've got 225 sports tires all around and 16-inch alloys. We've got vented discs all around. We've got a downforce on the tray. We've got a, we've got two seats with sport interior and a basic cassette radio because like, well, we don't really need that much more. I could even take this one out because this isn't meant to be a luxury car. We get power steering and ABS and um, standard 90 safety to keep this thing safe and relatively drivable. Progressive springs, adaptive dampers and semi-active sway bars and then and actually pretty reasonably soft suspension tuning. And as a result, this thing does 0 to 100 in 5.3 seconds. Yeah, 
it'll also do the quarter mile in 14 seconds flat so this is like in a straight line this is the quickest car um well outside if it if it were in the competition it would have been the quickest car in a straight line automation track let's see what it does there I think the fastest time here was the Tassale Mark II with a 221.7. Well, 222.2, that's actually pretty close. Yeah, this is quicker in a straight line and it's, and it's got the all-wheel drive, but the uh, Tassale had a more, had a, more um, had a stiffer suspension setup, you know, and it's just generally more sport oriented, more sport oriented. Whereas this one, if you, if you actually um, fitted some off-road tires and uh, took it to some, you know, fields or something, or to to an actual rally stage and gravel, I think it would do pretty pretty well. And um, it costs nineteen thousand two hundred dollars. So this thing is quick. It's reasonably priced. Um, it's not very cheap to run though. It uses a lot of fuel. Service costs are all right, um, but yeah, this is this 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 was just me having fun with uh, with another build that you know we could have seen something like this in the BJSCC, but we didn't. Uh, and this actually, um, that's actually a pretty a good a good point here. Like every single car in the competition was rear wheel drive. Whereas, as I said, th that, that was also the era, the, the sort of time that um, th that spawned the uh, Mitsubishi Evo and the Subi Subaru Impreza, but also there were cars like the Toyota Celica, the Honda Integra, that were front-wheel drive. And yet, none of the cars in the competition were front-wheel drive. Not a single one of them. I mean, yeah, sure, rear-wheel drive is more fun. But still, like all-wheel drive does have its advantages. But apparently, if we go to drivability, the engine is so undrivable that it completely ruins the advantage in drivability that the all-wheel drive system would normally give us. I don't, I don't fully understand, but you know, whatever. Anyway, this was just me having fun with another build. Um, I'm, I'm hoping to have the actual uh, finals of the BJSCC ready tomorrow or early next week and uh, I'll see you then.